and welcome to Seniors Yoga Session 3. We've been staying uh, more in the standing postures today and taking our time from going uh, to the mat to the sky. We want to go very slowly. We're going to put in a little balance today in our practice. And again, this is for seniors. It's gentle. Move the way you feel empowered to move. Make sure you have props around you and modify the pose, even if the senior session tends to be a little challenging. We will start by standing on the side of the mat. You can follow along with me. We will begin in mountain posture. Nice bend in the knee. Hands in prayer. Nice seal of the foot. Begin to study the breathing and begin to expand to slow down the breath, but the same amount in and the same amount out. On the next inhale, we'll go ahead and circle sweep up. Exhale, hands to your heart space. Inhale, circle sweep up. Hands to the heart space. And one more. Inhale, circle sweep the arms up. And hands to heart space. A modification for that posture is to bring the arms forward here and bring hands to heart space. To bring the hands forward, exhale hands to heart space, and last time circling forward, exhale hands to heart space. On the next inhale, We'll take the hands forward, exhale, come to the forward fold, and you may have blocks here if you wish, or hands on the mat. We will start by just walking hands and feet forward first. Feet and hands to the back. Walking forward again to that short line of the mat. Hands follow the feet to the back of the mat. And again, walking toward the front. And this is what it would look like if you had the blocks. Even the hand-foot coordination is very helpful for seniors, actually for anyone. Now, with hands either at the mat or on the blocks, we're going to go ahead and walk the feet back first, about halfway, so it's not even a full down dog. Then the hands come back. Feet again, open up a little wider. Then the hands come back. Walking more with the hands forward. Then the feet come up. Hands forward. Then the feet come up. And so on. Dropping the seat. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart space. Now we'll take a very minor twist. This time with the arms can be all the way up extended and we'll just rotate out to the side. We'll try this way. Inhaling to center. Exhale as you come up. 
inhaling to center, exhaling as you rotate out, and to the other side. And back. back to center. So with the arms above the head, that might be too much impingement for the shoulder for many people. So we could also take it to here. Taking it out. Come on back. And then the other side. Taking it out. And coming back to center. So those two options for a nice rotation of spine, but you want to make sure your Arms are being challenged, but they're still very safe. If it's too much for even the arms at all, certainly rotating here, hands on hip, come on back. Rotating here, hands on hip, and come back. Doing our best not to move the entire legs. We went over that in one of the earlier sessions. All right, here we go. Inhale, come up. Hands to the heart. Inhale, come up. Hands to the heart. Inhale, come up or forward. Either way is great. Hands to the heart. And on the next one, we'll take another forward fold. Exhale to come on down. Stepping back with the feet and the hands. Now bigger steps. And the hands. And the hands. And then the feet. The hands. And then the feet. Resting for a moment in the sacral plate. Or sacred squat. Extending the sacral plate. Extending the back of the neck. Couple of breaths. Another example. Same shape, same posture, just a different height with the floor, the blocks, a chair. Now, if you're using blocks, we're going to take them out to the side of the mat. And here, we're going to pick up the right leg, and you could hold it right here, almost like a stork, for a moment, or you could begin to take it out. You might lengthen at the hip and keep the knee bent, or you might decide to extend it and bring it back in. Flex at the hip, drawing the knee in, and returning the foot down. So two more times, storking the foot first, lifting it right up off the mat, that's core. Taking it to the back, extend it out, fold, flex the ankle, flex the knee, there goes the hip inflection, and drop it through. One more, shift the weight a little bit, to get the, the weight again is shifted in the legs, not in the arms. Good straight 50-50 in the arms and shoulders. Picking up that stork foot first. Bend the knee. Then the hip. Extend it out. Bend it back. Fold in with the hip. And lower down. Opposite side, three times. Picking up that left heel. Making sure that right side will take the weight. There goes the storking. Picking up the knee. Bringing the knee up as high as hip. Extending it out. Fold at the knee. Exhale as you lower the hip in flexion. Lower the foot. Two more. Inhale. Stork the foot. 
Bring the knee. Extend the hip. Reflex the hip, knee comes in. Lower down. Last time, shifting the weight, storking the foot, bringing up the knee. Knee goes out in line with hip, extend out. Bring it back in, flex the hip, lower the foot. Sit nice deep in the squat, you want to even out all the muscles. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Let it stir and swim a little bit. A lot of upside down there, a lot of inversion. So you want to make sure that when you bring that head back up from that low plane, that now you're at the five and six foot plane. So you want to make sure that you took a nice inhale. And if any dizziness occurs, just breathe. Slow the body down. And inhale, let's take the arms forward. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, forward again. Hands to the heart. This is an option. You certainly could take the arms all the way above your head. Hands to the heart. And the last one before we head down. Inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, all the way down. This time we're gonna go ahead and bring up that right side. We're gonna swing the leg all the way back, nice extension. And as you're bringing the right leg back, you're going to flex that right ankle, pick up the right hip so there's space to bring the foot back on its flat surface in line with the left foot. So two more. We'll shift over, pick up that right leg, straighten it out as soon as you can. Right about here, we begin to skim past the mat, lift it up, nice extension in the leg. Flex the foot, pick up the hip from even bone to a little bit of a pickup, and then the leg comes floating in and arrives next to the left foot. Last time, shift the weight, inhale, we'll pick up that right leg, skimming along the mat, pretty straight once that foot comes off the mat. Exhale, flex the foot first. We'll have too much foot space and it will drag and touch the mat. So if I flex it first, pick up that hip and then let it swing in. Very nice. Let's take it to the other side for the left hand side. I don't have my feet here at the blocks. They're just behind the line of the blocks or if these were your hands. I don't have my feet next to the hands here. They're behind the line of the palm. Shift the weight to the right. Pick up the left foot right. If I go pointy, I'm going to smash into the mat, so I'm flexing it. Now I can straighten it nice and extended, nice and long. Flex the foot. Pick up the hip. See the difference in just this little bit of dropping hip level. Picking up the hip, which also uh, brings in contact the adductor muscles here and the IT of that right leg. And bring in a lifted left hip and the foot swings in. Two more times. Don't forget you can be on a chair, chair level, a countertop level, block or floor. Shift the weight. Picking up the left foot, swinging it past until you can straighten out or yoga toe that left foot. Nice extension in the legs. Flex the foot, pick up that hip, and let it float in. Last time, 
shift the weight, flex that left foot picking it up, space for the hip to extend, leg to be straight, foot can point or flex whatever you wish, but on the return, flex the foot, pick up the hip, float it in. Very nice. Sit easy. You want to make sure everything's evened out now, especially in the hamstrings in the back and the gluteal muscles here. The insertion here. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Very nice. And shake it out a little bit. Move around. So taking our time, steps to the back of the mat, steps forward, walking together, synchronizing the move of hand and foot seal together, maybe bigger feet, bigger reach of hand. All of that is wonderful practice and a great introduction for seniors to begin to step straight back to the down dog, to hop back to the down dog, to step straight up to the top of the mat or to hop up to the top of the mat. It all starts in tiny little baby steps. The next thing we're gonna do, and this is gonna be beginning to practice some balance, is we're gonna drop in. Remember the knees come over the ankles so that I have space to take the hips to the back and lengthen my spine. We're gonna take the hands instead of here, or here, we're gonna take them out a little bit. And all I want you to do is practice leaning in and rocking back. As I rock back, I'm gonna bring my toes up. So a few of these now. Go to your practice, and just what you can do, balance, rocking forward. This is a balance. Heels are fairly high here. And again, and back. When the toes come up, the ball and the heel really press into the mat. They give you that nice seal. I couldn't get that foot off, off the ground if I tried. Where this is an easier foot. So as soon as I bring those toes up, I have pressed that foot ball right into the mat and they're solid. I came forward on the toes for balance. Balance is now coming forward. One more time, coming back and coming forward. Very good. Just play a little bit, getting those heels up as high as possible. Very nice. Inhale as I sit deep, head and sacral plate, low spine are level as we come up. You can certainly finish out with arms here or finish out the lift, circle sweeping, hands to the heart. That became a little bit of prep work for what we're going to do today in the third part of our senior yoga is balancing. Balancing was one of the most difficult things that I did. And if I was in a studio, which was rare, or class, which was rare, I would go to a wall. I would practice at home. I'd fall all over the place and then maybe finally find some balance. So never fear to get a chair, fingertips on the wall, the slightest fingertips on the wall. You don't have to grip the wall, but just knowing that your finger pads can touch that wall make all the difference in the world for your balance. So step away if you wish. A little more challenging, or certainly come to a wall, countertop table is wonderful, um, a back of a chair, but make sure that the chair is not going to rock or slide. If you have a chair, you want to make sure it's secure up against a wall or up against some furniture that is immovable. Chairs are terrific for yoga. So here we are with a little bit of balance. We're just going to tip to the left foot and pick up the right. I'm going to get that uh, leg up a little higher, knee in line with hip, place it back down, 
swing it back in line with my left foot, and then rebalance. Two more times, shifting, picking up the foot nice and easy. Make sure that the foot's not doing all the uh, initial action because it's hiking up. You want to also make sure that the hip has some action there too, that it shares the action with the foot. Last time on this side, notice I'm coming up. My left toes are up, ball and heel, sealed into the mat. Letting my left side know that it's going to take the right side as we lift up. And here you would practice on a 90 degree ankle, 90 degree knee, 90 degree hip. If I see this a lot, that's kind of draggy, a little heavy. If I flex it, now that may be fine. At least the flexion of the foot has powered on the leg. But to be fully in balance would be bringing up the knee as high as hip. That way it's not putting drag on the hip. Lowering it, swinging it back to meet it, and then shifting your weight to the other side. Now often the left foot might feel kind of taxed or a little crampy, so you're just going to work through your foot. What a great thing to do with the feet is to bring them forward, take them back, maybe circle the ankle a little bit in between the transitions and balance. Let it out. Let the breath work go out. Let the tension that's been built up. Remember, some of tension is good tension. It's not negative tension. It's strength. You are tensing these muscles. You're tensing the soft tissues in the body. Some of the um, tendon, ligament, cartilage is all coming in to help, especially in the joints. So if you feel that tension, you also might want to loosen it up a little bit and we'll go to the other side. Shift the weight to the right. Notice my toes came up in order to get that ball and heel in. Then when I'm ready, I do place those toes back down because they're helping in the balance. They started with power, now they're balanced. Swing the foot down, bring it in line with the right foot. Shift the weight. Inhale, shift back to the right. Let the right side of your body know you're coming up. Exhale, lower down. Bring it in line with the other foot, then shift the weight down. So slow, deliberate control gains power, which gains the grace. And people make it look easy because they're going really slow, but that all came from power. And back, good. Now we're going to go ahead and take the foot all the way to the back in a little warrior one balance. Shift the weight. That's an inhale. And again, you hear me sipping because my words are taking a lot of my air. We're going to pick up this leg. Any amount. It could be here, but just keep a nice flexion in the ankle. Don't drop the foot. We're going to take it. Shift. Now notice my spine shifted first. The leg is the passenger here, not the driver. Then it comes back. Then I'm going to set my hips into neutral, foot lands, spine comes up. Two more times. In sections, again, please hold a wall, please hold a countertop, and a secure chair. Inhale, I have to pick up my back foot. My hips are back here, they're, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. They're solid, both feet sealed in, hips are solid. So in order to get my hip on the move to lurch it forward a little bit, I'm going to pick up that back foot. There goes a nice, powerful leg. That's the yoga toe on that right foot. Then I'm going to lean into that left side. I bent the knee. It's gone right over the ankle. Pick up through the toes. Then come straight up. Work on a little balance. Lower it back down. Shift. And we'll do one more. Now, if it's too much to come from here, you know we're doing our steps. Picked up the toe, we're engaging the left side. You might decide just to come right here and shift the weight. You don't have to come all the way up where knee is high as hip. One more. Shift the weight, drop in. Obviously engage core. Take my core sessions, please. I have three sessions on YouTube, one, two, and three. And by using those core exercises, 
it really helps the body to get stronger to be able to hold some balances. I'm peeling my foot down and back up. I'm re-peeling the foot up. I'm leaning to the left. I still have my toes on the ground and I have about a 45 degree with the spine. Then as the leg comes up, the spine lifts. Kind of synchronizing that. Lower it down and shift. And we'll take it over to the other side. So three balances to prepare back for that warrior one. This is super wonderful for seniors. It gives you strength. We do have balance issues when we get older. I'm in my 60s. I work with a lot of people that are 50 to late 80s. And they're all trying to keep grounded on the feet and make sure that they don't fall or an injury from falling takes about three times as long to recover from than it did in our 20s, 30s, and 40s. Here we go. My right leg said, I have this for you. I'm gonna drop it in a little bit. Tip my spine forward. That's what took the hip and the back left foot to the back and then peel. I'm gonna keep a nice bend here. This would be prepared for warrior one. Inhale as I pick up that hip. She, excuse me, pick up the heel, which shifted the hip. Lean into the right foot. It found my balance. I'm not even going to let my toes go yet until I feel I've got everything in place. Then release the toe. Again, you can come all the way up, knee as high as hip, or just bring your toe to the mat. Down. And shift back to neutral. Enjoy that moment of equanimity body. Last one. Shift. Inhale, pick up, lean forward with my spine just a little bit, but keeping my neck and spine in line, finding the back of the mat, let the pads of the toes hit first, then roll the foot. Now it gets established, you feel security here, you might even feel a little old, the bad C word in yoga, confidence. You feel like, oh, okay. This feels familiar. Confidence was maybe not the right word, but a, but a completion, a comfortable. Inhale, that heel picks up. Brought my hips forward three or four inches. Bend into that right leg. It's going to take my rising left foot. There were the toes. And now it's almost like sink or swim to lift it. Exhale, lower it down, in line with that right foot, shift the weight. So very disciplined, but very soft, one step at a time, okay? That's how the body learns. So in between, of course, we want to shake it out. So today, we're also going to practice five star. This is great for seniors. And we might even put a little Vrikasana. Vrik is a tree, and uh, Vrikasana is the tree pose. You've seen it a million times all over the world. All different kinds of people doing it. There's a new way of doing tree pose for those that are very hyper mobile. Okay. Right now, we'll stay with our five star. Again, I'm shifting the weight. I'm taking my foot out. I'm still on this wonderful piece of real estate here, the pad of that toe. I don't really want to release that just yet until I feel I have everything engaged. Pelvic bowl is neutral. Zip up the zipper, engage the core. Arms can come later. If we start swinging up the arms, we're kind of interfering with balance. So we want to make sure things are done in nice steps. Here we go. I might just have my arms to the side. Then there comes the foot off the mat, flexing the ankle. And if I so choose, I'm going to raise up a little bit more. Bring the hands wherever you wish. Here, 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 here. Exhale, lower down. Shift the weight back until you're right in that nice line. And the other side. Right body is going to take this energy. It just lost the leg on the left side. 
So it has to make up for its twin that usually helps it out. I have my pointed toe. Arms are going to get ready. This is a great balance. This is a nice triangular balance here. Your arms act like poles. If you've seen tight, tight rope walkers, uh, they have poles out there and that helps them keep a balance going. If you need that, that's great. Shifting the weight, right side, lifting the left side, and maybe taking the arms up wherever feels good. Lowering down, shifting the weight until we're right neutral with the uh, gravitational pull here, right between my feet to here. You feel that nice, aha, very good. So tree pose, rikasana. Sometimes I may step over here and I have my hand on the counter. And at first, I have this secure feeling. So we'll pick up the knee, we'll take it out to the side, go down and get your foot. You can certainly get the ankle or the knee. You'll bring it right into the uh, upper thigh. That is one way. Another way is calf. And another way is toes turned out so that the ball of my foot and my five toes are fairly secure tree pose to the calf. Press the foot and the calf together. Lift through core. Then if I want to go higher, I'm going to go down and get it and bring it in. This is for people that are very flexible that can bring that leg here. Secure yourself by holding wall or countertop. And then maybe Release it. And higher. Or here. Or cactus arms. Or hold the counter again. The idea is to teach the body, to train the body. It's not about your ego, how beautiful you look right off the bat, balancing, look at me, look at me. It's really about teaching the body. Now our second version of tree is for the people that are hypermobile, they need strength in the joints. They need the joints stronger, tighter. They don't need supple, right? Because then the joints suffer. So here is another tree pose. Taking the leg out from Because I'm no longer on line, I'm offline. So that left hand side has to work twice as hard. Lower down, shake it out. This whole left side whoo, was holding for quite some time. If you wobble and you wibble and you fall, fall. Well, don't fall, but allow this counterbalancing to happen. And don't get the ego wrapped around the fact that you're wavering or you're shaking or you're, I don't know, I'm tremoring or I fall out of something gently is what I meant. So you fall out. It's okay. Let it go. It doesn't matter. The other side, again, you could hold wall. Turn here. Step off the mat. You have a good firm place to stand. Another way. Foot. Right there, happy in the ankle. This is a great jumping off place. A little bit of a hip opener. I am definitely stretching out the hip muscles on the left side, but I'm not necessarily getting a stretch on the muscles of the right. Take it up to the calf. Press the sole of the foot into the calf. Let them meet and join and kind of create a bind. Go to the wall if you need to touch the wall. An immovable chair or a countertop. But the, we, I keep saying kitchen countertop because it's a perfect height for most people. They can get that hand high. You don't want to be here. You don't necessarily want to hold a chair too low. Right? Countertops are just a really nice height. Now if you wish, go down and get that ankle. Bring it in. 
We are beginning to drop this thigh bone down a little bit, so we're meeting the knee. Foot and thigh are pressing. Take off the hand and explore. Hands cactus. Whoop, I slipped. Hands up. Leg up for strength. So you can see these balances in tree pose from many different directions. Prepare and exhale to come down. Nice and slow and controlled. And then let that left side kind of float, move, readjust. It took quite a load. It took half the body. Very nice. So beautiful balance in the warrior one, preparing us for flowing. We're going to start, uh, not an advanced move. I, I'm not an advanced asana player. Right. I just go nice and easy. So we did that one. And we also did this nice 90 degree ankle, knee, and hip. Lowering it down. Good. And the extension of the leg and the swinging it under. All these are wonderful balances for you. Alrighty. Tree pose. <clears throat> Five star. And that nice stair step balance. Let's go on to the mat. Let's come forward here. We'll open up the legs. Go ahead and squat in, nice straight back. Just to allow these hips to loosen up a little bit after the balances are very powerful. Don't forget to please be forgiving in your balances. If you wibble and wobble and fall, that's fine. Just, you know, take care, don't injure yourself, be safe. Now we'll go ahead and lower We'll walk the hands off to the short line in the mat. I'm going to turn my feet until I come to just this nice stretching out here. In balance poses, we're not doing a lot of super deep stretching. We're doing strength and power, which is what we need. We need all of it. I'll lean forward a little bit. There goes that foot back there, rising up. That's what sent my hips forward. I'm going to go ahead and match the front foot to the back foot. And again, we'll pick up the heels. Sit the knees quietly. Use the control of the feet, getting the shoulders off the weight by coming over the wrists. Flip the feet and fold in child pose. Seniors, if it is too much to get the hips down to the heels, you can put a pad or a pillow underneath you. You can also just come up to what is hip over knee, but you'll want to extend the arms and come into a bit of a puppy stretch here. Walking the hands back to the knees. Extend the arms. That's what brings up my head, neck, and spine. Shift the weight to an opposite side. Now we've got these nubby heels that we're stuck in if we're that low onto the heel. I will often go to my left when I first started practicing 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago. I would always go to the left because that's where the bait, that's where I rock the children. Right here. Left hip, left hip. This was much uh pliable, more stretched out, stronger. This was stiff, unused. So for the first few years of my practice, I leaned forward, got up off the nubbies, put my hands down if I needed to, and set my hips off in the opposite direction. It feels a little awkward. It's the same awkwardness of which index finger is first. So we want to have all of this in our toolbox when we practice. Change it up. Go in different directions. 
if you finish your practice in fetal position and you're to the side, go to the left side and the right side. Mix it up a little bit. That way we're not getting back into old patterns, old habits. That's what we're trying to erase is a little bit of the etchings of patterns that are we've established throughout our lives, especially seniors who have lived 60 to 90 years, that's a long time. And to reestablish a new pattern at those ages is not easy to do. It takes a lot of conscious effort. Now I'll place that hand, because I want to protect that hip. Some of you are at home on a carpet, some of you are on a floor. If you're definitely on a floor or cement, to roll your bones around into the floor are not very comfortable, so make sure you have blankets and padding and everything that you can think of. I am using the heel, the hand, and the hip to inchworm myself to the end of the mat. Let's bring those feet out, mat width. Exhale, drive the cat, right? So here comes that beautiful lift, Uriana, lift into the belly. Shoulders can be rounded. I don't want to take back flat shoulders. Now I may decide to go here and then extend the legs and lower, or I'm going to round through. Bring the legs in if you need to for a little core. Lower it down. And then taking the heels back out to the corners of the mat. Relax the shoulder blades, let them just have a gentle kiss together. They create a platform or a platter at your back. Helps to lift the lungs and the heart up. The dot in the middle of your forehead and the dot in your chin create one line. And then that one line is parallel to the floor. So the line becomes not parallel here, not parallel here, but just about Everyone's going to be different according to your skull bone. So whatever feels even for you, if you're doing yoga with a partner or you have someone in your house, they can look at you from above. That's one thing that the yoga teachers are wonderful for is that they're your eyes in the sky. And they can see that you're in line, middle of the forehead, tip of the nose, middle of the crease of the lips, chin, sternum, belly, to the pubic bone, but this is one line. And everything to the right and left of it is even. Shoulders are level, hips are level, kneecaps are level, feet are relaxed as they just flare to the sides. Deepen the eyes, unhinge your jaw, Your practice is natural. Your movements are your movements, just like a child again. Namaste. Seniors, you rock.